I am in a penthouse on the seventh floor in the most exclusive neighborhood in Praia, the capital city of Cabo Verde. It's the creme de la creme. The Prime Minister lives just opposite his apartment. In today's episode, I'll be traveling through the islands of Cape Verde in search of luxury real estate. I'll be visiting the most sought after, exclusive and luxurious neighborhood of Cape Verde. The embassies, the ambassadors, they all have places here. Some of these multi-million dollar neighborhoods are sitting on the mountain, high up in the clouds, taking advantage of the sunset, sunrise and cool breeze from the Atlantic Ocean. You can tell by the prices, like a half a million real estate properties. From Sal to Sao Vicente to Santiago, join me as I tour where the 1% own residential homes in this archipelago and island country in West Africa. If you're looking to buy a holiday home or an investment property, or just curious to see what the real estate market in Cape Verde looks like, stay tuned and watch till the very end. The previous video, we made a travel video through the islands of Cape Verde and I made a travel guide I would like you to check out that will show you the contact information, directions and list of places I visited while touring the islands of Cape Verde. If you do not have all the time in the world to research and scroll through the internet looking for information about this island, things you can do, places you can visit and information you need as a tourist, then download my PDF. The link is in the description and you should check out that episode if you haven't watched it yet. The first location is the neighborhood of Sao Island. Sao is flat and dry, but has some of the finest beaches among the other islands, with just enough interesting restaurants, bars, and activities to engage in. Sao is more of a touristic island filled with five-star and all-inclusive resorts and hotels. However, the town of Santa Maria offers a range of rental apartments and investment options, with price averaging upwards of 80,000 euros for a three-bedroom up to 130,000 euros. With the all-year-round summer weather, a lot of foreigners buy holiday homes in Sao and it's relatively affordable when compared to other touristic cities around Africa. What people do, they buy their apartments, they stay here one, two, three weeks, they go, they come back next year again, Christmas, Easter, then the house is closed. And how much does it cost? 80,000 euros. Yeah, that is the average. Mm. 80,000, 90,000. Yeah. For Europeans, they say it's cheap. It's yeah, I was going to say, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's why they're not Europeans here. A lot. Properties in this area are in high demand as a lot of tourists flood this island. The need for residential and hotel apartments has become more evident. Milia Resort offers some hotel and holiday apartments to investors who want to own an investment property that yield cash flow. The three resorts, we have Tortuga, Dunas Resort and Lala. If you put all the resorts together, there are 2,228 villas, apartments and hotel suites. That When people buy here, they have a choice. They they either have that apartment or villa for their own personal use or they go into the rental program. What's really in it for the owners who have invested? Property is theirs. They own the freehold in its entirety. In the land registry, it is their property. They then have the option of putting the property back into the hotel rental scheme. They can use it five weeks a year for their own personal vacations. It's a very simple proposition. And not only are you getting a rental return, but you're also seeing the capital growth. As the resorts become more and more successful, you're going to make more and more money. Melialana is achieving more like 86% occupancy. What were normally sold here for 189,000 are currently available at prices near 150,000. I think the starting price for a three bedroom villa is around the 270,000 mark up to a four bedroom villa. One is at just under 600,000. Let me know what you think of real estate in the beautiful island of Sao. The next neighborhood is Sao Pedro in the island of Sao Vicente. This neighborhood is a 15 minute drive from Mindelo, the capital city of St. Vincent. I discovered this neighborhood when I came here to swim with the sea turtles and I was blown away by the topography and the kind of villas built here. You can tell by the prices, like a half a million real estate properties, uh, mostly luxurious real estate over yeah. here and also in the back of the, of the hotel as well. Why would people choose to live in San Pedro against like the city center? The people that live here, is, there's two kind of people. Yeah. The local people, the, the ones that are born and raised here, yeah. and the ones that come here for the calmness, the beauty. I was informed there are two parts to this neighborhood separated by the Sao Vicente International Airport. You, local people own all these villas right here? Definitely not. <laughs> these villas are owned by uh, European people. One of those might cost 100k euros each. 
the local houses are more on the other, the other side. side. Actually, there's another name for that, Saint Andre. Because yeah. you can tell, like by Correct. the by the type of architecture. Because yeah. when you come here, it changes. Like a villa, and I don't know if you can see the drone shot up up there in the mountain. There's a villa up there. Over here, you can see mostly villages, mansions, top-notch properties. Over there, you'll find the common neighborhood houses, all stuck together, and you know, local design. Most villas here are sitting on plots larger than 2,000 square meters with average price starting from 500,000 euros. You see the rocks over yeah. there? The rocks are built, the, the, the walls are built from the rocks extracted from the actual mountains from here. So oh, they rather they okay. rather do that instead of paint or do any kind oh, of a okay, other okay. job because yeah. the sea salt might deteriorate the paint every yeah. two months so they have. When you look at it, like they're using rocks and the rocks is brought out from like San Pedro right here exactly. so they don't have to incur extra costs trying to get something else in the city and it's center. a smart move too yeah because if you would uh, use uh, like paint to paint them you would deteriorate every two months and you yeah. have to spend money to paint all the villages again so this is this will last a, a lifetime I spotted a few terraces here I'm not sure exactly how much they would cost if you need more information about real estate in San Vicente or in any of the neighborhoods listed on this countdown, the sponsor of this video, Chave Group, is Cape Verde's leading marketing and investment company. They are a commercial and real estate management company focused on helping investors make the best investment decision in purchasing of properties within the islands of Cape Verde that yield high returns. So if you're in search of residential, commercial or investment property within the islands of Cape Verde, Contact Shavi Group, I'll leave their contact in the description of this video. The third neighborhood I'll be highlighting is Alto 14 Hills in the beautiful city of Mindelo, San Vicente. This is one of the most luxurious and privileged neighborhood in the entire country, being home to the former president, hotel owners, famous entities from all over, including soccer players, singers, and models. This neighborhood has one of the best landscape in the island, giving you an entire panoramic view to the Bay of Mindelo, including the hills of Mount Cara. It's been the, the most prestigious area in, in San Vicente since forever. The luxurious real estate game here is so strong with some properties exceeding the mark of 4 million euros. A 4 bedroom villa in this neighborhood averages upwards of 400,000 euros up to 5 million euros valued for a mansion like this owned by a wealthy investor in the island of San Vicente. Guys, I'm about to show you one of the most expensive villa uh, right here in the 14th. This property actually, as you can see from the drone shot, is sitting just right on top of the hill. And uh, this is literally how the rich people like to live. So this right here is his Rolls Royce. He is one of the first people that brought a Rolls Royce and a Bentley to the islands of San Vincent. Because uh, I haven't like, I've been on the island, I haven't seen anybody drive a Rolls Royce. So this is the main entrance into the house. This is the living room. This property has 11 bedrooms. Now, this right here is a mansion. See, but I think what is most interesting is the view that comes out of it. Endless views of the Atlantic Ocean and the city of South Vincent. Nice setup, guys. Look at this. Oof. They say this property would be anywhere within the 3 to 5 million euro bracket because of the location, the size of the property. On the top floor, which is uh, what, what's going to welcome you into the property, you have the living room, the dining, the kitchen, and uh, this other side of the property, guest toilet, welcome area, and everything. But downstairs, you're going to have more of the living space, the rooms, and then on the other floor, you have the garage, so come right here. All of this you see, all of these are just rooms upon rooms upon rooms. So down here, and let me take you guys right into the studio. <laughs> like when, when I step in here, like the, the owner of the house is not an artist. He doesn't record music, but he just loves music. I heard like he's friends with Akon, so probably, oh, okay, so when, maybe when Akon comes, you want to like, drop a bar or two this way they're gonna get it done the owner of this mansion has an obsession with music reason why he built one of africa's finest floating studio in mendelo welcome to the first ever floating multicultural center in africa based in mendelo south Vicente. actually the idea is if you go back in the history of our continent Cavert used to be the point of not coming back to africa during the slavery time and that's when samba the promoter of this 
beautiful multicultural center decided to give back to the new generation. That's where he decided to have like this beautiful three vessels, or you can say pyramid. On the right side, you have the recording studio. The recording studio is definitely for different, you know, talents we have in Africa in terms of music. The biggest vessel is the exposition center. It can hold like 50 to 100 people for small exhibition conferences based on any type of cultural events. On the left side, which is a mini bar, during those conferences or during those exhibitions, can get some refreshment during the whole day. Kule is the one who definitely design and kind of conceptualize this whole project. The idea of Mr. Kule Adeyami, who is a great Nigerian architect. The whole idea of this studio is try to promote new talents and those talents can be from Cape Verde. They can also come from different areas, different regions of our continent. Let me know what you guys think of this beautiful neighborhood of Alto 14 here in South Vincente. For me, would I like to live here? 100%. I'll be throwing parties every day. Number two neighborhood on the list is Pamarijo Baijo in the capital city of Praia, located on the island of Santiago, and it's currently the capital of the Cape Verdean Islands. This island has been developing and modernizing rapidly in several sectors, including the real estate sector. The neighborhood of Pamarijo Baijo has some of the most luxurious villas and investment properties with very high returns. Pamarijo Baijo has a mix of residential and commercial properties. It is the most exclusive place in Praia. It's the cream de la cream. The Prime Minister lives just opposite this apartment and most other, the embassies, the ambassadors, they all have places here. Almost impossible to get house here for rent. I've been trying. Properties here appreciate faster than any other location in Praia. In general, Cape Verde is a developing country. A two bedroom in this location is around 120,000 euro. Three bedroom around 250,000 euro. Paint house for now is over 500,000 euro. For 600,000 euros, you get yourself an apartment like this in Pamarijo Baisho. It has a pool, it has a sauna, it has a gym, three bedrooms, it has about four uh, bathrooms. Also, it has an open kitchen, all fitted with very nice cabinetry. It has a laundry as well and I love the space, it's all automated. Yeah, this is the first time I'm getting to tour an apartment and leaving it. <laughs> there are more apartments and villas in this neighborhood for the obvious reason, which is price. Something else that you're gonna notice is there's still quite a number of land, you know, that hasn't been built on, right? The vibes I'm getting here is in a couple of years, actually, all of this is gonna be sold, right? The country is like really developing real quick. I mean, if you were going to uh, rent this for a day, it's about 500 euros per night. That's what it is on Airbnb. The owner of this penthouse keeps changing his mind as to whether he's going to sell it or not because in a year, I heard he makes as high as 150,000 euros. So you're going to make that much then. Why are you going to sell it? Land in this side of Cape Verde is considered gold. You can find villas up to 3 million euros in this neighborhood, but it's only a matter of time before the prices would quadruple. So contact Xavi Group if you're thinking of owning a home here. Let me know what you think of Pamarijo Baisho as the top two on the list of luxurious neighborhoods in Cape Verde. Number one on the list in my opinion and the most highly sought after neighborhood in the whole island of Cape Verde is St. Philomena, a privileged neighborhood in the north of the city of Mindelo, San Vicente. This neighborhood is quickly becoming the fastest growing and prestigious neighborhood within the islands of Cape Verde and it's also the newest residential area here which started around 2010. So it's a more uh, luxurious and a mix of urban, urban design brought into the landscape of the the, the area that is more of a, a high high top area so uh, they they got a lot of nice houses it's a very young neighborhood and it's growing you can see a lot of properties being built only nice properties only uh, places where you can tell already it's, it's like 
rich people houses. It is sitting on top of the hill of Aldoka. It is home to a variety of people including the highest influential entrepreneurs in the country, sports professionals and many others. This neighborhood reminds me of Clifton in Cape Town. The views here are phenomenal including the entire beach of Landina, the docks and the prestigious Mount Kara. So I noticed just right at the top there's like a very huge villa. I could not help but stare at this mansion sitting pretty at the tip of the mountain. That house particularly took a, took a very, very long time to build because to build that house, they had to create the roads to get there and to get uh, to create the road, they had to really break into the mountain, like uh, create the whole path. Just that work took, uh, took almost a year and a half. But as soon as they, they did that and they got to the, to the top of the mountain, then they had to make it like uh, flat. So that took a little while as well. And to build a house is the house of the owner of the biggest food supplier in the country. He's the most rich guy in, in the island. You can tell by that, yeah. It belongs to one of the most successful entrepreneurs in the country, rumored to be worth at least 10 million euros. Entry price for a three bedroom apartment in this neighborhood starts at 200,000 euros up to 500,000 euros. A five bedroom villa here can demand a price start upwards of 1 million euros. Let me know what you guys think of real estate in Cape Verde and you can download my travel guide if you plan on visiting Cabo Verde. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.